plugin of the week comes from Softube. It's Atlantis Dual Chambers. Atlantis Studios is a studio in Sweden, has two acoustic chambers. The studio dates back to the 1950s, originally called Metronome Studios. It is a world-class studio that has hosted many top artists, including ABBA and many, many others. The chamber plugin here includes all of the original features of the two rooms, which I believe were originally designed to be discrete left-right chambers, each with its own speaker and own separate microphone, allowing to have true full stereo. As I understand it now, only one of the rooms is being used, although they've done the emulations of both independent chambers giving you the ability to use either one or use it as originally designed. It comes with four microphone selections with different polar patterns and a variety of other features that have been added in by Softube. Uh, it's pretty damn cool. This adds uh, a new chamber plugin to the collection. One of the things I love most about it is the fact that you can make adjustments and hear the results immediately so there's no delay and it's pretty good on the CPU as well, which is also a bonus. So let's have a quick look at the graphic user interface and then kind of go through some audio examples. To start off with the chamber selection here uh, is made right here with the chamber AB button, or you can turn it off altogether. Um, you have four microphone selections, including a line audio design CM2, which you have as the cardioid. Uh, an RCA 77DX, which is an old ribbon mic, figure of eight. There is a cardioid U47 from Neumann and an Omni Electrovoice RE55 microphone. So it's a dynamic microphone. So you have four microphone choices. If you deselect it entirely, you get a full frequency speaker feed into it. So I'm not sure exactly how they picked it up. Obviously you need to be picked up with some form of a microphone. Uh, but it gives you an uncolored, at least by the microphone standards, version of the audio signal going into the chamber. So those are the basic features. Those are the primary ones you'll be working with. There's a drive control here in the center and a wet dry control right down the middle. You can link or unlink controls. When you unlink the controls, it allows you to separate the chambers so that you have the two separate chambers left and right if you like to do that type of thing select two different microphones if you prefer, set different reverb times, etc., etc. You can also set the pre-delay to work on a tempo synced based fashion. So the uh, settings for each chamber, if linked together, then these are identical. So you'll see them in mirror image here, the primary one here being the red one, which is the decay knob. Um, anytime you see an orange script here, on the uh, plugin uh, setting or plugin itself, uh, those are the original settings. So undamped would be the unprocessed signal. This would be the original de decay time of the room as it naturally exists. So um, the mic distance, which would be the typical mic setup for the room, which is a, a far distance, et cetera, et cetera. And then there are some features that Softube added in to make it more usable in the modern setting. So we have a variety of things here, the pre-delay control here, decay time control here. It won't show you anything in terms of the seconds of reverb time. In general, it's pretty damn long. The mic distance is amazing because this will really give you the uh, most broad change in sound. Where the reverb time might change the same, it really changes the early reflection patterns um, and gives you a tighter sound as you go near and a wetter sound as you go, more distant sound as you go farther away. It's exactly as you would expect. Um, then uh, what we have here with the mechanical damping, there are materials that they use to dampen the reverb time. So we have a half damp setting and a full damp setting. And it not only shortens reverb time, but also gives you a uh, different tonal coloration, absorbing more high frequencies, warmer sound. There's a unique feature here called the resonance control. And the resonance co control essentially tones down natural resonances of the room. So if you feed something in, a particular sound, guitar, vocal, whatever, and it happens to over-resonate that particular frequency, this gives you the ability to tone that back. So sometimes it'll make the reverb a little bit more generic sounding, but if you have something that's over-exaggerated, it'll pull it in and allow you to kind of dial it in so you get the sound that you're looking for. So all of these settings are duplicated over on this side. 
Down here at the bottom, we have a whole separate section that allows you to EQ the reverb. So you have a full, uh, what looks like a 1084, because it has the high um, cut and low cut filters, has the uh, low shelf with all the selectable free, the mid band frequency, as you would expect, and then the three high frequency bands on the high shelf. So all of that looks just like a 1084. Um, what we have here is a dynamic section. So you have an amount control and a release, and then you have three options, compression, ducking, and gating. So you can work with all of those to set, uh, amount would basically, I guess would be uh, somewhat like a threshold like setting, I guess, if you're working with the gate. So what it does is it splits the incoming signal because there's no external key, splits the incoming dry signal, feeds it into here, and then you adjust your settings accordingly. Now, this I.O. section is really unique. Uh, one thing that's simple, straightforward, you could probably do in your DAW anyway, is slop, swap the left and right, but it's there available for convenience. Now, in the original setup, there was no stereo input into it. It was always mono in, and if you set up two mics, it would be stereo out. Or if you fed it into two separate chambers, then it would be mono for each and mono return for each as discrete stereo left, right. So if you select this to mono input, you'll get the original setting. Um, then it gives you some crossfade bleed here. They give you a minus 10 dB bleed, right? So a little crossfade between the two. Uh, and then a pure stereo input. So that'll give you a more discrete, wider sound field. Now we have the normal stereo output here. You can mono the output if you like, or you can add some width to it. So they give you the feature here of giving you the ability to add a little bit of width. There's a, a left-right output balance control. And the only other thing that exists here, because there's some additional settings here, which are kind of cool. You have a high pass filter, uh, which give you more control than what you have over here. Uh, a little headroom control here for driving it, if you prefer. And then a phase control, which is sort of unique. So it will uh, phase invert below the selected frequency. And if you go all the way across, it will give you a full phase invert for left, right. right. So um, this is sort of an interesting aside, which can sometimes add a little width to the sound. Let's get to some audio examples. Start with drums, uh, the basic thing. Let's just quickly go through with the linked controls here, uh, the two basic chamber settings. So we'll start with the drum reverb here and uh, go through a few things. Uh, excuse me, spazzed out there for a second. Uh, just go through the different microphone selections in the two different chambers. All right, let's, uh, let's hit it. Here we go. Okay, so quite a long reverb time. So I think here, just to give you a bit of an idea of, you know, just the different tone that you can get from it, um, the the adjustments that are gonna kind of really dial in the sound here are uh, one, the decay time, allowing you to shorten it, um, the damping, the mechanical damping that we have here, and then the mic distance. I'm gonna start with the mic distance because I think this is kind of uh, one of the more important settings to really dial in and get a sense of. So you really get that sense of like more, much more early reflection, smaller space. You get really the sense of the smaller space. Um, far away, obviously with the, the distant miking, you get you know a bit more of the ambience for creating more depth and distance or something that's more intimate. So that control ends up being important. So now if we use this in conjunction with the decay setting,
So you, you see the range of sounds, how you can really dial in the sound field. Really amazing. I always love chambers for drums, especially just because the density of the reverb is, you know, what really separates it from just most room reverbs. Um, let's go through just some of the quick damping settings here. Right, so that gives you tone down some of the density a little bit, kind of uh, mutes a bit of the top end a little bit. And obviously you can get to some of those things here with the EQ settings, but just to show you what the raw thing does, really cool. Add a little pre-delay, we could add some depth to it. Just love the imaging there of the figure of eight microphone in this. Um, so really, so you could really hear how much uh, like a, of a broad spectrum that you have in terms of the adjustments of the sound, um, you know, just specific, specifically, excuse me, with the uh, mic distance and the decay settings, and then also with the damping. And then the different tonal variations come through much more clearly than they do initially when you have the full open setting. You can really hear how broad and open this is. Um, and then, you know, some of the settings here will allow you to control. It's like, a, for example, if I sort of mono uh, the input, that will change the sound field. And then I can also change the width on the output of the uh, reverb itself as well. A little tighter there. Right, just to give you some extra measure of control in terms of just not only the you know the way that it comes in, but also you know and the output, which would be a kind of a typical adjustment. So let me unlink this here for a second, uh, split it out, and let's see what we get in terms of the two separate spaces now being discreetly left and right. So that just kind of gives you more sonic possibility there um, uh, with playing with the output and the separation of them. Really, <laughs> really damn cool. You know, there's a lot, a lot of flexibility here. Let's just let's just do a quick uh, vocal thing here just so I can show you uh, this here, how it works with vocal. So this goes back to the original setup here. So let's dial in a quick sound here for the verse. Clutch onto this sinking ship Delude me into a state of bliss Offer me some peace and kind Rectify my inconsolable mind Clutch onto this sinking ship Delude me into a state of bliss Offer me some peace and kind Rectify my inconsolable mind Clutch onto this sinking ship Delude me into a state of bliss Offer me some peace and kind Rectify my inconsolable mind Clutch onto this sinking ship Delude me into a state of bliss Offer me some peace and kind Rectify my inconsolable mind 
clutch onto this sinking ship Delude me into a state of bliss Offer me some peace and kind Rectify my inconsolable mind Clutch onto this sinking ship Delude me into a state of bliss Offer me some peace and kind Rectify my inconsolable mind so you could hear there's quite a lot of resonance there. Let's see what the resonance control does. Clutch onto this sinking ship, delude me into a state of bliss. Offer me some peace and kind, rectify my inconsolable mind. So, so it's a it's a subtle setting, even with the dB there. So I'm not sure exactly how that's applied. One thing that you should know is that if you isolate them out or separate them out and then you link the controls, everything will default back to the left setting. So just an FYI, so you don't end up spending your time and just wanting to link two settings and you end up changing everything. Very cool reverb. A lot of possibilities with it. Um, I could go on and on, you know, with the vocal kind of getting into longer settings and all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure that's particularly appropriate for this particular vocal. Um, but, uh, I love chamber plugins. I'm really into them. And this one is amazing on so many levels. Just, uh, the amp drive actually adds like a little bit of grit to something, especially if you're driving in something that's, that has a lot of low end to it. It'll give it a little bit of harmonic distortion. Um, the flexibility with it, the different tonal settings that you can get to um, with the different microphone selections uh, and all the additional controls, which I didn't even get into here just because, you know, like you dig in, you got an EVQ on the back end, um, the ducking and gating and all that sort of stuff. You can play around with that. But the primary features, the sound, the flexibility, how quickly you can use it without any delay, um, the uh, um, lightness on the CPU. Uh, it's a no-brainer in my mind. Uh, this is a, a great plugin. Softube always comes out with great stuff, and this one is certainly no exception. Uh, that's why it's the plugin of the week. Softube Atlantis Dual Chambers. Check it out.